Well, hi there everyone, and welcome back to Feed the Beast Monster. So, last time, we made this. A tesseract. And I said, while I was off camera, I'd go and make another one. And that's exactly what I did. You did not need to see that at all. I've set up another um, little work table here with all the stuff in. The big problem was getting enough of these ender pearls, and really, you did not want to have five episodes of me running round the countryside uselessly looking for endermen. So we have a pair of tesseracts. That means we can finally get the lava source going. So what else do we need for the lava source? Well, we need a pump. To pump the water up and we want the build craft pump uh, it's really easy to make from a mining well iron gear redstone iron pick and iron so let's get to that wooden gears stone gears uh, does I only make one wooden gear stone gear iron gear we need stuff to make an iron pick and we need a bit of redstone, I'm sure there's a bit in there. Okay, so I've got an iron pick already, so I don't really need one. So it was... This is where I get the recipe horrendously wrong. It was only one iron gear, wasn't it? Iron gear, iron pick redstone and all of those most definitely do not make oh well I was nowhere near was I pick at the bottom there we go a mining well we turn the mining well into a pump by adding a tank it's just glass in a square so let us grab a bit of glass from over here. We need eight bits. Just like that. And we have a tank. Combine the tank with the mining well above it and you get a pump. So we have the pump. We have the tesseracts. Two of them. We have miscellaneous junk, which can go back into there. So what else do we need? Well, obviously we need to get power over there. That's just leadstone energy conduit. And I've got a energy cell charging up here. So actually, let us get a bit more fuel in here because I want to show you one more trick that I have been using so in here no in here we have a leadstone energy cell I've been making a few extra up just because I've been using them in here we have these invar ingots I was using them to make some part of the tesseract I've forgotten already but if you take a leadstone energy cell and surround it with invar, you get a hardened energy cell. The leadstone energy cell can hold 400k RF. This can hold 2000k RF. So it's about five times as much energy it holds. Okay, so what I've done is this is one of these hardened cells and this is one of these hardened cells just to give me things holding a bit more energy. I've been using it because I've been taking the energy cells down to the quarry just to speed things along it's getting there it's about 10 or so levels down i've also put some water into it because there's nothing worse than a quarry which gets stuck on a bit of lava and because we're a bit short of obsidian uh, if you just pour water down it turns the lava into obsidian and then mines it which is really useful otherwise you run out of obsidian 
Okay, so we have uh, a source of energy to take over there. We have the pump. We need a way to get the lava back. And the best way to get lava back or to get any liquid to move around, in my opinion, are the fluid ducts from thermal expansion. These need hardened glass. There we go, hardened glass and some copper. Now, I think I'm actually out of hardened glass. I'm not, I have four bits, so that makes it easy. A bit of hardened glass, a bit of copper. I had to get some more of the obsidian, obviously. You know how short I was on that. So, I shall make it all up, because you always need this stuff. Copper can go in there. Okay, so we've got Tesseract, we've got power, we've got a pump. I think that is everything. One thing that would probably be useful are some building materials. Now, this might not be pretty, at least to start with, but it will work, which is all it needs to do. Let's pop off the Crescent Hammer. The Crescent Hammer, pop off the energy cell. And let's finally head back over to this tank, which we built how many episodes ago now? It is way too many. I'm trying to remember how we were connecting it. We were connecting it there. So, we have a Tesseract right here. Pop. We are going to connect Fluiduct up to it. Yeah, that'll work fine. Straight up and straight in the side. That will just work now. Now, with Tesseracts, you set a frequency for them to work on. You can pick a random number. I'm going to pick the number 12, because it's a nice number. Okay, it's set to frequency 12 now. Um, every frequency... You need a unique frequency for everything, basically. I'm going to set this simply to lava. You can type a name in, save frequency, and now, any time you want, you can just click on lava and it will set it automatically to frequency 12. Down here, you can configure what it does. Sending and receiving items, fluid and energy... We want this to receive fluids. You can set it to send and receive, blocked, send only, receive only. It's apparently by default it's set to receive everything. So now it's set to only receive um, fluids, so lava. We're ultimately also going to want this to send power back to power the pump. So I'm going to set this to send power. You can set it to work with a redstone signal if you're doing really clever things with it. You can also set it to public access, restricted, or on you know, only. That only really matters if you are on a multiplayer server. If you set it to public access, anyone on the server can use it. Okay, so that is set up. I'm going to... What I'm going to do is power it directly with a leadstone energy cell. Um, that might look a little bit untidy for now, but for now I'm just going to put a piece of conduit out the front and stick the hardened energy cell here. Okay, that shouldn't drain. Even if I set the output on the right, it's not draining, that's fine. So it's now going into that tesseract. Okay, we are halfway there. Now we just have to set up to other side. And for that we need to go back into the Mistcraft Age. One thing I have done, which I have probably haven't shown you, is... Well, I've moved all of the farm. The farm was up here. It is no longer. I've moved it all down here into what's sort of the farming district now. In this texture pack, it all looks a little bit glitchy for some reason. Up against the stone, I don't know why, but they're all growing fine. As are the reeds, which are growing absolutely everywhere. Back down into the Mistcraft room. It's been a while since we were down there. And this one, 
is our infinite lava sea. Now, since we were last here, I think I've changed it a bit. I built a little house to protect me from the mobs. And then it's still raining. And then I went around with torches and lit up this entire island. It took me absolutely forever. There's a horse on my roof, which is awesome. The mighty nose at its tail. Yep, just one horse on the roof. So, yeah, it's a bit of a naff house, to be honest. I just did it really quickly. And I won't really be coming here very often. Ah, now I can immediately see something which I have forgotten. Great. Okay, well, we can start by... Dropping down over here, and we're going to build a little platform out into the sea. Let's actually just build it over here. Uh, yeah, just above sea. Hello, horse. Can I? Oh, I'm not going to bother you because I'll just bump you into the lava. Holding shift very, very, very carefully because I'm holding two tesseracts. And I would cry for a month if I dropped them both into the lava. Now obviously this needs tidying up a lot. Let's see where the chunks are. By hitting the correct key, um, we are pretty much right in the middle of a chunk. So I think I'm safe just to do this. Eee. This could so easily end in complete disaster. Okay, so I've made a little bit of a platform. With a hole in the middle, over which I'm going to put a pump. One pump. Connect the pump while well, drop down this tesseract is probably the main thing. Tesseract can go... where shall we put it? We could put it on the diagonal. Would that be the easiest? That might well be the easiest. We're sacrificing looks badly here. Never mind. Connect up a fluid duct. Connect up a leadstone energy conduit. Now this ain't working, as I'm sure you can tell. And the reason for that is that here we are in this Mistcraft world, and that means the overworld, back where the castle is, is unloaded. So, the test tract over there isn't sending power. If we go the other way and come, go back to the overworld, this will stop working because this won't be loaded in the game. So we need something to load this chunk. Now when I did the quarry, obviously the quarries have an automatic chunk loader in them. We're not going to use a quarry, we are going to need to use some form of anchor. So now is the time to go back into the overworld and build an anchor just to load this chunk. Oops. So I shall get to and make, get back and get all the stuff together and then show you how to make a chunk loader. Okay, so I have got the stuff together. Just, it takes quite a lot of stuff to actually make one of these um, anchors. I've had to make a trip or two down to the quarry to get some stuff and use up a bit more of my um, Mimikite. But what I'm going to make is this thing. This is the Chicken Chunks Chunk Loader. It's my personal favourite and it is the most useful, I think. You can see it takes an pearl. That's fine. It takes gold. Okay, we need some gold. It takes two diamonds. So it's quite an expensive thing, some obsidian. I've had to go mine some more. So we start off just by making a good old standard 
enchantment table. You stick that underneath a little bit of gold with the thing which I failed to pick up, which was an ender pearl. Stick an ender pearl on top, bit of gold, and the enchantment table, and you get this the chicken chunks chunk loader. What this does is allow you to load a chunk anywhere. So if I stick this down in a Mistcraft world and come back, the chunk that it's in will stay loaded. And what I'm actually going to do, hello Ocelot, is pop over here, pop this out and take it with me, just while I actually get this thing working in the lava dimension. And what might be really useful actually would be to create a linking book from the lava tank to it so I don't have to run over here all the time. I'll probably get round to that off camera. Okay, so here we are back in the lava world. There we go. Is it still raining? Hey, no, it's still raining. I thought it had stopped. There is our little platform. Let us plonk. Let's get the chunk loaded first. Okay, so the chunk loader can go anywhere within the chunk. The chunk boundaries are there, so I'll just plonk it down here. You get this nice little spinning orb effect. I guess that's the ender pearl. Right click on it, it's owned by me. If you click the show lasers button and get out of it, it'll show you where it's actually loading. If we turn the overlay off, you can see it's loading all that because it's loading a 2x2 two two chunk, 9 chunks in total. It only needs to load one chunk, this little chunk that it is sitting in really, at least for now. I don't know how that actually works with gathering lava from over there. I guess we'll find out. Turn those off. We don't need them. The next thing is just to check that this will actually suck the lava up, or have I done anything stupid? Which is always a possibility. There goes that into there. It would be really helpful if that was set to an output. And there goes the lava. Okay, so that is working. Uh, that little overlay is the same one that brings this up. That's bound to number keypad 1. The little bit on the right that's saying fluid lava is bound to number keypad 2 or 3. Oops, no. Oh, that tells you how to craft it. It is bound to something. But I don't honestly know what. But the important thing is that that is now working. I'm drawing lava up into the Tesseract, so let us very carefully get you back. And let's head on back to T Overworld. where we might finally see a drop of lava coming through into our tank. At long last, and again, the horrible long... Hello zombie, nice to see you. There we go. And in fact, I have just realised something which means that you're not going to be hearing any sounds from the game just at the minute because the sound is turned off. So let's just really quickly put the sound back on. Apologies for that. Now we should be getting lava popping through here. We are obviously not. Let's plonk this down and see if that has an effect. Ah, uh, did I? I bet I didn't actually set the Tesseract up on the other end, did I? Well, that's pretty dumb, isn't it? Okay, so back we go again. Apologies for this. 
But, you know, it's a lovely little walk, isn't it? You get to go past all these trees which aren't being cut down because I haven't bothered to repower it and all that stuff. And look, you can listen to the cows now. Isn't that nice? Unlinked linked book. Couple of those. Let's grab a pair of book stands. Let's not because we don't have any wood. Oh, that's really annoying. Darn. Okay, back we are here, and now you can listen to the rain, and the rain, and the rain. So, click a link. Oh no, horse, don't fall in the lava. Stupid horse. Click, we have a link book, and now I'm going to have to turn the sound down here. Okay, we want it to receive... Own the energy, send fluids, and do nothing with items. Okay, now that might actually work now, and let's get out of here before we are deafened. Run, run, run. There we go. My, that was loud. Let's pop back up here. Where we might see... something. Ah, oh dear, why you no work? What is wrong with your... Oh, for God's... Oh, well. At least we have a link book. We have an unlinked one somewhere in my inventory as well. It's there. Okay, this is what we call a severe lack of Minecraft skills. For which I can only apologise. So... What I have forgotten to do, as you are all absolutely screaming at the screen right now, was set it to the right frequency. We call this being incredibly stupid. Okay. Oh god, creeper. So let us plonk that down there, plonk this linking book, hop back over. Linking books are amazing for that. We are going to pop the link back to the overworld right there. And yeah, as you can see, this hasn't actually been set to lava. You can see it saved it though. Click on lava, click tick. It's now set to frequency 12. Hop back to the overworld, and there's your lava coming in. And we have tons and tons of it, and I don't know why that briefly glitched. But there we go, 15 buckets, 17, 18, 19, 20. We finally have infinite lava! Isn't that fantastic? You even get the nice little animation as it comes in from the side of the vent. Remember, the other one is in the bottom. We're going to suck the lava out. Up, hello sheep. Up there and into some a um, set of engines over here. But there we go. Infinite lava. It finally works. So, apologies once again for the slight ineptitude getting that working. But... Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I will see you next time.